Now that we've given an overview of key concepts and features supported by object-oriented Java, we're going to zoom in and take a look at some of the structural elements supported by object-oriented Java, including classes, objects, interfaces, and packages. We'll focus primarily on classes and objects in this discussion. Object-oriented apps written in Java are organized in terms of certain structural elements, such as classes, objects, interfaces, and packages. Oftentimes, the arrangement of these structural elements is guided by software patterns. Java functional programs leverage these object-oriented structural elements and patterns very heavily. In fact, you'll see it's next to impossible to write any Java program without using classes. So let's start by talking about Java classes and objects. An object is a class instance that performs certain operations and interacts with other objects. You can think of a class as something like a cookie cutter that's used to produce cookies, which are the objects in this context. An object in Java resides in a memory location of a computer. We'll take a look at the case study EX0 throughout this discussion to provide some context for that statement. For example, here's an implementation of the simple hash set subclass in the simple set hierarchy. And you can see how it's implemented using the Java hash set collection. So an instance of Java hash set is passed to the constructor of simple abstract set, and it's used by the simple hash set implementation, as we'll see when we look at the code in more detail. An object consists of several things. First, it consists of state, which are represented by data fields. For example, in the context of our simple abstract set class, the M set field stores the particular type of collection, be it a hash set or a tree set or a concurrent hash set and so on. Data fields are typically defined as either private or protected using access control specifiers. Private means that they are not visible to clients. Protected means they're not visible to clients, but they are visible to subclasses that extend from the superclass. An object also consists of behavior, which is represented by the methods in the class. For example, you can see that simple abstract set contains an iterator, add, and contains method. Methods also can be specified as private, protected, or public. In this case, we've defined the methods as public. If they were defined as protected, they wouldn't be visible to clients, but they would be visible to subclasses. If they were defined as private, they wouldn't be visible to subclasses either. We're now going to give an overview of other Java object-oriented structural elements, starting with Java interfaces. A Java interface provides a subset of the features provided by a Java class. You can think of it as the scrawny younger sibling of the bigger class. In particular, an interface prior to Java 8 could not contain method implementations, only method signatures or method declarations. Modern Java, in other words, Java 8 and beyond, now supports default and static methods in interfaces, which is very powerful. And we'll talk about that. And you'll see some examples throughout this material. A Java interface cannot be instantiated, but must be implemented by a class. So for example, the class defines the methods and the, any necessary fields needed to implement the interface's signature. The comparable interface is an example of this. Comparable is used to compare values to, for things like ordering, for sorting, or other kinds of relationships that require comparing. And by itself, it just defines a method called compare to. And then other classes, like the integer class or the string class in Java, implement that interface, and they fill in the compare to method to do the comparison based on the particular data representation that those classes have. Classes and interfaces can be grouped into an organizing construct called a package. For example, the Java Lang package contains classes that are fundamental to the design of Java, like integer, string, and thread. The Java Util package contains a collection of common reusable abstract data types, like array list, hash map, vector, and so on. The Java IO package contains classes that provide operations on files such as file input stream, file output stream, and the file class itself. You can also define, of course, your own custom packages. For example, the sets package in our EX0 case study contains all of these simple set-related classes we'll be walking through in our next part of the lesson. 
In general, packages help manage large projects by avoiding collisions for common names. So by organizing the Java class library into packages, it helps to rearrange and segregate the different pieces effectively. And you should do the same thing when you design your own large projects as well. As before, if a lot of this stuff doesn't make a whole lot of sense, then you may need to get some more hands-on experience, in which case I strongly recommend you take a look at our Java for Android MOOC, which is available on the Coursera platform to provide you with some of that classic object-oriented Java background. So that's the end of our overview of structural elements that are supported by object-oriented Java.